What up though y'all, this is Ami with The Real Visual Outlet. Today we have a special guest. I'm Lucy Gavali, for those who don't know me. We got Soso here. Gavali, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So let us know um, what's your social media and uh, where you from? Um, all social media outlets. You can just follow me at Lucy Gavali or just straight Gavali. Instagram is Gavali, everything else is Lucy Gavali. I'm from Detroit, born and raised in Detroit. Spell Gavali for the people if you don't mind, because they may have a hard time. <laughs> Gavali is G H A V A L L I. For sure. Right. Gavali, that sounds like some Italian, like mobster <laughs> type <laughs> stuff. I mean, I get that yeah. anyway from your movies. There's a yeah. lot of killing, not a lot of shooting in there. Yeah. Are you in the mafia? <laughs> So where did you get that name from? Um, actually, my old engineer who used to uh, do my music, um, we had to get I had to get a new rap name because somebody else had my original rap name. So we was just like throwing names out there, and then he said Gavali, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, that's that's sweet as fuck to me. Mm -hmm. So I just put Lucy Gavali together, and that's how we got it. So what was your old rap name that you had? Lucy B. Lucy yeah. I like Lucy Goodbye. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say I, I ended up liking it way better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you do do music. Yeah. So how long have you been doing that? Since I was like seven. Oh. Okay. Like writing, but like it's taking it serious. I think I started at nineteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what made you go from music to now you writing like films and stuff like that? Right. I don't know. It just happened. Like I, I was like. I wanted to do a movie because I knew I was good at writing, so I just was like, I was inspired by multiple things, so like I just wrote a movie and then it blew up, like I didn't even expect what happened, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So Betrayal, that's your first movie that you ever wrote? Yes. Now how long did it take you to write that? Um, of, <laughs> like maybe in, in like a couple of months. A couple months? Yeah. Months. Okay. Okay, that's not bad. I'm like, yeah. you cooked that up in the month. <laughs> yeah, I cooked up just... part two in like three days, but the first Ooh, one right. was a couple months. Yeah. This part two was really just like a continuation yeah. of part one. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. When I went to uh, college, like I didn't like uh, writing essays and yeah. like that. Yeah. So I can't imagine sitting down writing no damn <laughs> Yeah. Script. Yeah, you gotta have a lot of over time and patience to do that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And especially because you gotta make everything, you know, kind of play out. And yeah, work, work yeah. It's, it's 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 a it's a process to that shit. Mm -hmm. Like, and you gotta make it interesting. You gotta get people what they want. Yeah, you know, so. and I think you did that. You yeah. know, with betrayal. Yeah. Because I seen um I seen both of your movies. And I was going through the comments and everything mm -hmm. like that, and people, you know, they was really on it. Like, yeah. They were part three. Yeah, I was like surprised. Like, I swear to God, yeah. in my life, I didn't expect what happened. And then I do know, correct me if I'm wrong, but on your first movie, didn't it get deleted at one point? Yeah, like yeah. something went on with the audio. Mm. Oh. I was hurt off that mm -hmm. shit, because, like, it, I would just put it on YouTube, woke up the next day, and it was like viral. I was mm -hmm. like, damn. But then, yep, it had got deleted, and then we put it back up, and it did the same thing. Right, That's right. What's well, then that's good. At least you know that the views that you got was legit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So with YouTube, like, did they allow you to get your view? Could they, did you, like, talk to them about, like, getting your views back or anything like that? Mm -hmm. like, okay, it was just a done deal at that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they trying to take your money. Yeah, I'm trying to yeah, take yeah, that's what you like that. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. Right. So I seen on the second movie, you have, you know, more so. I don't, I don't know if I heard. I may have heard it on the first movie too, but on the second movie, you had like a lot more of like local artists, mm -hmm. you know, playing the music in the background mm -hmm. and things like that. So is that like another reason because something happened with the audio before that you decided to do something like that? Uh, yeah, that was a, a definite reason. And then I wanted to like, um, cause I like to like support people. A lot of people was like sending me their music, and if I liked it and it fit the movie i'll put it in there right yeah so but definitely play the read a part with part one because like we was using like like celebrity music mm -hmm. and shit like that like i never knew we couldn't do that shit yeah. so yeah. that's when youtube snatched that shit like, <laughs> um, i think who told me that after you reach a certain amount of subscribers or a certain mm -hmm. amount of views then that don't really become too much of a problem mm -hmm. too much but um I, they, it's not really too much of a problem if you you can't get paid if you got like copyright claims on your stuff. Okay. 
So that it, it it's really it was never a problem. We tried to take the audio off ourselves and we fucked up. Like that wasn't YouTube's doing. Mm, okay. So yeah, that's what happened. But all right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's let's get into the movie then. So Betrayal Two that came out. It was in October. October thirteenth is when I put okay. it in theaters. Okay. So tell tell the viewers a little bit about um, the movie without giving away too many details that they haven't seen it already. Part one was just like. It was just pretty much like me and my like my brother and my best friend we was like all broke and we like came up with a plan to have my girlfriend set men up online or whatever and we would like go in and rob them she ended up leaving me for somebody else um she ended up betraying me my best friend ended up betraying me and part two was just like a play off of that yeah. i ended up finding a new love interest and she was cousins to one of the guys we betrayed in part one, so it just became right. like crazy. <laughs> a whole lot of drama. Yeah. <laughs> I think you say uh, your best friend in the movie, like she seemed like the most grimy person in the movie. Yeah, and it's, it's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny because I I didn't mean for her character to be portrayed as that because that's like my like only friend in real yeah. life for real like. <laughs> So I didn't mean for it to be even be like that, but it's like she played her role so yeah. well. And it's like she just gave it her all and mm -hmm. that's just like people still love her. Like they look they don't look at her like, oh, we don't trust her in real life. They like, oh, you really played the fuck out of that role. So yeah. So how did you come up with the concept of the movie? Like was that real life? Like niggas that was trying you was really hitting licks on people houses. Uh, <laughs> like, don't get that on camera. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Some of it is true, and some of it is like added on just to make the make it a movie. But some of it, some parts are very true, and that's just all I'm gonna say. That's why that shit did numbers. Yeah, it's like oh, the truth always sets you free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And plus, anyway, like I think the movie, uh, like it speaks on real life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, sure. What's going on? People is really out here. Yeah, they gotta do what they gotta do to survive. Yeah. Type. yeah. We're part of the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. um, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't like to make assumptions. Yeah. But you know. Um, so, you know, your movie is about betrayal, and people say um, in the LGBT community there's a lot of shade and there's a lot of betrayal. So, mm -hmm. um, and especially in Detroit, the community mm -hmm. in Detroit. So, how do you feel like that relates to your movie, um. if at all? It's funny because when I first came out with Betrayal, I like it, I put it out there for everybody in Detroit that's in the LGBT community to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, I fell out with a lot of people because a lot of people felt like they was obligated to, like they felt like they didn't have to audition, that they should automatically have a role. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of people didn't, like a lot of people in the LGBT community here they don't want to really see you make it. And I had to step out of that lot out of there because I didn't want to be shit like that. It's just a lot of grimy ass shit that go on within the LGBT community. And it's like, I'm a full on supporter of it, of course. Mm -hmm. But like a lot of people here in my own city did not support me. A lot mm -hmm. of people in different other states supported me. And a lot of people wrote me and was like, you know, in your movies, you spoke on a lot of shit that really go on. And I did not look at it like that. I looked at it as like, I just want to do a movie. Um, so I put like real life situations in it and I didn't know that like it played a part in what's going on in the LGBT community. Like I read the comments, a lot of people say like this shit be happening, like this has happened to me. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's, it's crazy because like my own city didn't even, like, a, like they didn't really support it. Yeah. They really mm -hmm. like hate it and I didn't understand it because I'm like I extended this shit out for everybody. Mm -hmm. You so, know, in, in our previous interviews with like other artists and stuff, they will always say, you know, yeah. You know, it's hard to get support from people out here, you yeah. know, and stuff like that. So let's touch on that. Like, what do you think the reason being that, you know, a lot of artists in Detroit have a struggle, you know, coming, you know, having support, you know, for their work? I think that a lot of people here are, I think that Detroit has a lot of talent and mm -hmm. a lot, it's like a lot of hate in people's hearts. And they don't want to see, like, it, I'm not going to say everybody here don't want to see you make it, but they simply just don't want to see you make it. Like, we all came from the same shitty ass city, so to see somebody prosper, they don't like that shit, especially when it's not them. I think it's just something within people themselves. Like, I, I, I just, I, for the life of me, I can't understand, like, why I want to want to see one of y'all make it. Like, I could never physically be like, oh, I wish, I, like, a lot of people, I don't understand that. I don't, I would never understand it, but I seriously think that 
it's just like a black claw over the city of Detroit and it's like they really I can't understand it like why the fuck why do you hate on the next person like what what you don't even know that person what is your purpose of hating on them like why don't you want to see somebody make it like I, I don't understand like I've been born and raised here but I don't understand a lot of shit like I just I don't get it like I just simply think it's something within them like it's a lot of hate it's hateful ass people in the city but I mean it yeah. That's just what it is. I, I agree. You know, you know, if you from Detroit, you know, drop a comment, say something, you know, <laughs> tell us what y'all think, you know. Yeah. For yeah. real. You know, but yeah, we we definitely, you know, wanna surround ourselves with positive people. That's me all the way. You know, so yeah. you know, other artists that we interviewed as well, they just say you see when you go out and you mm -hmm. know, work with other creatives, you see the same people in the same Exactly. You know, exactly. so that's the vibration that, you know, you yeah. see in the tone. But I yeah. think that's the same too. You know, you speak on the LGBT community, like here in Detroit, for the most part it's really small and I think that's kind mm -hmm. of the problem too, because mm -hmm. everybody's in everybody else's business. Exactly. Or that person with that person with that person, yeah. that person that exactly. person causes drama and things exactly. like that. Like um I know I don't get into none of that drama. I'm, <laughs> right. not, I'm not, you know, in, yeah, in, yeah, in it like yeah, that. Yeah. I put innuendo sometimes. Yeah. I'm there in a while. <laughs> exactly. You know? So I'll stick away yeah. from it. <laughs> uh -huh. Exactly. You just yeah. gonna say, hey. Right. <laughs> yeah, you got to. But don't, I don't mix myself in that crowd anymore. Like, no. Let's get back into the movie. So, I know you said the first movie there was a little bit of drama going on with, like, you know, people showing up, doing their parts, and everything mm -hmm. like that. Second movie was much smoother. Was. People actually did the work they were yeah. supposed to be doing. So. Yeah. Um, what was it like on set, especially with, like, those sex scenes? <laughs> I mean, they, I mean, I seen the beginning of the, of the movie, it said rated R, mm -hmm. but it looked like they was really fucking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. Really fucking. And I thought to myself, like, I know they gotta be either boyfriend and girlfriend or girlfriend and girlfriend, because they was just a fucking each other. Nobody <laughs> was in a relationship that was in this movie. <laughs> Nobody was really fucking. Nobody else. Okay. Not at all. And a lot of scenes they had on like clothes, but like okay. the way we filmed it, you couldn't tell. But that's good filming. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. So um, nobody actually had sex. Like okay. seriously, <laughs> I would spill the beans because I like doing that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they really they, they just did it so good. Yeah. But like nobody was having sex. Well, we about to create some real actors and actresses out here. Yeah. Real that's real. yeah. Yeah. They really put their all into it. It was it was like and that's what's up. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we definitely need an award ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> that would be dope, though. Yeah, yeah it, it would, though. It, yeah, it would, though. That would be good. For the city, man. Like yeah, for real. Mm -hmm. So this next movie that's coming out, this is another continuation. The betrayal was something totally different. Oh, the, yeah, this next movie is just a, a totally different movie. It's not even an LGBT, uh, LGBT movie. Okay. It's, it's just, like, another movie I wrote. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it has nothing to do with betrayal. How has being from like uh, Detroit shaped you, and also you know this being Motown, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of yeah. artists like rappers and stuff. Mm -hmm. You do music, but mm -hmm. you branched off into film. So how would you say that shapes you, like just being from the city, and you know it's just more artists, but you know. I think that if you from this city you gonna the city gonna shape you regardless because of how it is like this city has really humbled the fuck out of me i love being from detroit don't get it twisted i, lo I simply love it because of what barry gordy did and like how many artists came from here or you know i just i, I, I love it um i wouldn't say that being from here shaped me into doing movies though that was just simply like i was inspired from the girl who wrote um the lies we tell and the secrets we keep. She mm -hmm. inspired me, not mm -hmm. nobody from Detroit inspired me. So when I seen her movie and I seen like the level she reached, I was like, well, why why can't we have a, mm -hmm. a, a, a LGBT movie? So I started writing it then. Mm -hmm. But the original cast I picked, it was just a hot ass mess. Mm -hmm. I almost gave up thousands. I mm -hmm. did give up thousands of time, but um, I wouldn't say being from here actually shaped me with the movies. I just that was just something I was like, oh, she do it, I can do it. Do you ever look into it all, you know, like making a, a kind of like a TV series uh, or anything like that? Yeah, a lot of people ask me, but since Betrayal 2 came out, I really don't have a time. Like I, I started doing other people movies or like uh, uh, my movies. I don't really have time to sit there and like write out like, like 
Cause that's a that's a process. Like people think like it's much easier than a movie. Like I don't think so. Like you gotta really make sure as show after show is like straight. So that's like a what a fifty hour movie. Yeah, yeah. But y'all yeah, thought about it. I may do it, but like no time soon. Yeah, whatever you do, we'll tune in. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Is there anything else you know that you just want to kind of give out to the viewers or anything like that? I just want to simply thank everybody who supported me. Like, I never in a million years would have known. Like, my movies would, like, Take yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I always thought my music would. And that's why I think I branched off into movies more because it took off way before my music. So I simply thank any and everybody who supported, who write me. I see all DMs. I write everybody back. I thank every last single soul who watched it multiple times. Like, I thank everybody. That's what's up. You legit, man. Like that. Yeah. You can definitely view her movie on YouTube. Yeah. The Betrayal and the Betrayal 2. Please tune in. I think you're going to really like it. I appreciate that. I want to thank you for coming out to oh, the no doubt. outlet. Oh, I thank y'all for having you me. Know, it was lit. I like you this. You're a great writer, dope <laughs> thank person. You. Thank Make you. sure y'all check out Gavali. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>